uh, uh, sh- uh, we're live. Uh, I just watched a show with you, and the bookcase behind you is white. <laughs> and now it's like, did you paint it? I think I watched one with you from a year ago. Oh yeah, I moved. I'm at home. Uh, I, I, I want to start to show James. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Uh, last uh, when people come on my show, um, my intention is to just have intimate conversation and and make people feel like, hey, they came to my house and they had a good time. And last time you were on the show, I thought, um, it, it got squirrely towards the end, and and. I, I want to apologize, but I want it to be something more sincere than an apology. But I, I don't know exactly how to do it. But but I, I, that that wasn't my intention for the show ever to get squirrely or ever pay got you with you. And I just wanted you to know, like today, I brought you on because I consider you someone significant who uh, I had interaction with in my life, and I just wanted to catch up with. And usually, there's some intention to have someone on. I, n- never nefarious, never. I was just like, shit, I got to reach out to James and see what James is up to and bring him on. And I think the people would like to hear us talk. So I appreciate you. you. And you didn't bring it up at all in the text. I reached out to you. I'm like, yo, James, can you come on? You're like, yeah, brother, let's do it. And here you are. So I, I appreciate the, um, it makes me feel like I didn't break trust with you, or at least uh, you're giving me another chance. So I appreciate it. I appreciate it. it, it and I'm making presuppositions that somehow I did offend you. I don't even know. You never told me that I did or didn't, but, but I didn't like the way it got weird. You know, afterwards, some clips were taken from the show and I, I know, um, it wasn't like nice. Oh, right. Yeah. So Up until you just mentioned that, I don't, I don't, I didn't remember. Perfect. Okay. It perfect. Show, <laughs> it just perfect. goes to show how important it was really not. I love you. I love you. Um, Hey, well, so, so where are you? Um, at my home in, in, in what, in what state, what country? Uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Okay. And, and that's, that's the winter home. No, that's full time. Home. Oh, you're not doing Idaho anymore. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um for two months of the year when the girls are out of school. Hey, it's interesting you describe it like that, James. Um out of school. I just assumed you did it to get away from the heat because Scottsdale's crazy, right? Oh, that too, but um if it wasn't just that, I probably would be there for four or five months. Mm, mm, mm. So it is really, I mean. We're here because they're in school. Dude, is the heat tolerable to you at all um, in Scottsdale? Let's say you did live there in the summer. Would you go outside or is it just completely uninhabitable? It, uh, Yeah, I guess everyone – I guess everyone responds differently to it. But, um, yeah, it really is uncomfortable. I think that uh, I could provide um, the opposite – side of it as a better understanding that that like backs up what i say when i say when i say things like uh it's just uh, unbearable is uh, i lived in canada for so many years um in a northern part of canada um and so i recognize the quote unquote unbearableness of the cold which is it's really not livable right i mean there are modern technologies that allow us to do it but um and it, that it's the same kind of thing for the heat here. So yeah, you live in AC. You go from AC in the home to AC in your vehicle to AC in the office to AC to a mall to AC to a public area. They try to pump AC indirectly outside. That's considered unlivable, unbearable. I, I never thought of it like that, but when you do compare it to the cold, it it is significantly better because in, in let's say you didn't have shelter worst case scenario you could just pull up under a tree and for those three months a year you become nocturnal right so you yeah. sit under a tree from 7 a.m to 7 p.m and just in just find shade and you sit perfectly still but you could not do that in in certain in certain parts of canada uh, six months of the year you would just die yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. i never thought of it like that so so to you doesn't well, there were how- there were uh, populations across time that were capable of surviving. I mean, they're on the there's still cultures and groups that are on the East Coast in Canada and in Alaska. And uh, I'm not sure what the proper terminology is for classification for those individuals today. Uh, Inuit. Uh, I'm not sure if Eskimo is still approved as a. I as have a, no idea. Okay, <laughs> I have well, no- Whatever the case, right. um, they they actually did, you know, were capable of doing it, uh, just like the uh, uh, Native American uh, tribes that are well known in northern Arizona and the southern portion of the, of the country. 
they were capable of handling somewhat similar heats. So, right. but I think to your point, they really did like build specific homes, right? That protected them from the environment, but they really shut it down for three months. Like it was like it was nothing, or they possibly did uh, some nighttime stuff or very early morning and only late day kind of kind of things. You know, are are you still involved heavily? Are are you involved in the day to day operations of OPEX? Is that your? Not really. No. Uh, are you retired, James? Pretty much. Yep. Tell me, t t can I hear a typical day? What's a what's a normal day for you? Do you yeah. Have a um, <laughs> actually, I actually thought about this. Um, so this is this is pre thought. This is not coming. <laughs> I just want to give everyone a heads up to. I was like, what am I going to tell them about a typical day? Uh, but it shows you shows you a number of things in there um, of me just. Uh, <laughs> pre pre yeah thinking about this um i wake up and uh have breakfast um i make my family breakfast uh then um cuz my girls get up around 6ish or just after um and i'm up around 5 um so I make everyone uh, breakfast and then they leave around seven ish. Uh, my oldest daughter drives to school. Whoa. Uh, drives. So Hannah, yeah, believe it or not. <laughs> wow. I can see uh, just by the look on your face shows you how, just how much time has passed <laughs> for our conversations. Wow. Uh, Cause you were there at the initial uh, Hannah before Chloe. I mean, Hannah within uh, I can just remember you guys watching her um, run around in her rubber boots outside the outside of OPT in Calgary, and there was no such thing as Chloe. So, anyways, the Cl Hannah takes Chloe to school or drives her to school at seven ish, um, and then I pretty much uh, read uh, quite a bit for probably a number of hours on most days. Um, I generally then uh, walk for probably an hour or so, uh, mid AM and listen, uh, to things and learn. Um, I do some kind of, uh, physical activity generally then, uh, you know, towards the middle portion or the end of the morning, um, sit down and have something to eat, uh, mid afternoon, probably more reading or, um, yeah, or just learning of some sort. Uh, then I have a kind of a timeline around two middle afternoon, two ish. I have to go and get Chloe and pick her up because Hannah comes home a little earlier. Um, and I pick her up and come back home and then we kind of, you know, prepare for the rest of the day, whether they have like evening activities, uh, which you have to kind of, you know, prep meals and have them ready for. Um, or take them somewhere, quote unquote, either for a sporting situation or, uh, or really it's Chloe at the time because Hannah's driving herself. But um, and then I make supper for uh, the family, um, which generally starts around, you know, or start preparation around four ish, a little bit after. Um, and then it seems after that it's. Uh, walk Lily, our little dog. Uh, my wife and I uh, spend that time at least together most times every day um, uh, to chat during the time we're walking Lily. And then evening time, if there's some activities, you know, I'm taking Chloe right now to either soccer or just doing the odd thing. And then uh, we kind of shut it down around after seven ish. Um, and Leanne and I generally just sit down while those two are getting ready for bed just after eight, uh, Leanne and I, uh, just sit down on the couch and watch something, uh, useless, um, for <laughs> hours. <or> so. <laughs> what is useless? Tell me useless. Tell me. Oh, useless. um, gosh. Uh, what are, what are we, wa oh, like, uh, like, like you'd watch Yellowstone. You'd watch like a series like that. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to put us in the camps of uh, what okay. is useless and what is not. Okay. Um, but yeah, I well, actually, I did watch Yellowknife and all the other subsequent 
No, Ye- Yellowstone, right? Yellowstone, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yellow knife was it's my subconscious Canadian talk of earlier of the Inuit that uh, brought that back. Um yeah, no, so I give you an example. I think more recently we're watching a Netflix show, five shows on midwives. Oh, it's it, not the documentary, the fiction stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that shit's yeah. scary. My, I think my wife watched that one. That one's scary. It, it, uh, it's scary, right? It's like, yeah, no, it's yeah. set, uh, it's set back in, um, Oh, maybe I no no. You know which one I'm confusing it with? I'm confusing it with the one where they just use women to breed and they pass women around. A uh, uh, bridesmaids. I couldn't. My wife tried to sit me down and have, watch that. I watched thirty minutes. Oh, okay. and I'm like, I'm not, I can't do that. Oh, okay. It scared the shit out of me. Or like the Handmaid's Tale. Like yeah, yeah, that thing. That we thing. watched that too. Yeah. You know, so I guess you know I'll, I'll back up. Maybe some of it's not useless, but I it's not stuff that you know we're really. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty much just to shut the brain down prior to going to sleep. So yeah, so that, so that describes the day right there. So you're just reading a, sh- a ton. Yeah, yeah, I'm reading. Uh, is learning. this a fa- is this a phase of your life? You're gonna die doing this? Just the next thirty years? Just forty years? Just be reading like a maniac? Yeah, quite possibly. You know, I uh, I don't have a, um, I guess general. I mean, I'm fifty. I just turned fifty years of age, um, and. Uh, I probably know too much with regards to like physical entropy and, and, a, a, you know, a full life, you know? Uh, so yeah, it's, I guess it's kind of quote unquote normal uh, for, for someone like myself who did a lot of physical stuff for the first 40 years of my life. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> arguably too physical, but I did a lot of physical stuff. And so I guess I just, I'm just on the back end of, you know, the physicality. There's no more improvements in physicality and I'm just hanging on. So what else is there to do, but challenge cognitive function and, and, uh, those things after the physicality has been prominent. So I guess it kind of makes sense. Um, let's say you start a, uh, a book and in, in you're 20% through it and you're like, I don't want to finish this. Do, do you still yeah. finish it? Man, that's, are you asking that question? Cause you have personal experience with that. Uh, yeah, I, I do. I, yeah, I, I, do. I uh, but then I was also going to tie it into working you. out. I was like, I was going to actually be like, Hey, do you remember being a kid and being 20% through a workout? Oh. So I was going to kind of just kind of put the two okay, together. Okay. Sorry. Well, br- bring up that question. The second portion of the question after I answer this, but the reason why I asked you is because I thought I was, you know, alone out there of the individuals that would do that. But I, um, I've had enough experience. This is just my own personal experience. I've had enough experience where when that thing comes up where I'm like, you know, into the reading quote unquote, and I'm just really struggling, whether it's not like digging in or it doesn't, it's not confirming thoughts for me or is not validating something that I know or et cetera. I've, I've learned over time to actually keep going and to stay more focused Mm, mm. because of the experiences that I've had of, let's see if I can try to remember. Well, you know, what would support my point would be to, you know, I, I can just recall, reading something again, like going back to it more recently and quote unquote, finishing it and really changing my perspective, mm. you know? So Do you remember what that was by any chance? No, God, no, um, okay. okay. I think it was a biography of some sort. I think it was Charles de Gaulle. Um, the airport's uh, named after a large him France, writing right? on a yeah. French, a, fr- a former French general mm-hmm. um, that I, I basically got into the, I have a colleague and friend who works with the foundation of foundation. I'm a member of foundation against intolerance and racism here in Arizona. And, um, Michael is his name. And we have, we had some meetings in the back of meetings on the back of his wall during the meetings. He had uh, Winston Churchill, Charles de Gaulle and, and someone up as posters. And I was like, gosh, I can't place who that other person is. Winston Churchill, for most eyes, is somewhat 
easily discernible amongst others, you know? Right, right, right. Um, and he's like, oh, yeah. And then he's like, oh, you should get into it. And so, of course, I'm curious and I have time to read. So <laughs> I got this big volume and I got through it partially up in the summer, the summer up in Idaho, maybe two summers ago. And those things came up, right? Like, uh, you know, there's something in here that's just not, you know, dig, you know, I found myself like, you know, birds flying by yeah, or whatever. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And I just kind of gave up on it. And then more recently came back to it and I was just, you know, extremely beneficial uh, that I did to learn, you know, just to give you a little bit of an insight to finish that up as to why it was important. It uh, led me into, um, ironically, reading about Napoleon uh, and the differences in the revolutions uh, of America and France in, in, in language, right? So Charles de Gaulle, kind of just it happened at a time, you know, war times. It's a very interesting time to kind of think about these things that the French said, like liberty, equality, and fraternity. And so the, the fraternity aspect in which, in which he, you know, spoke about really evoked um, uh, an interest for myself in reading more about Napoleon. Now, as I say that, this is for those who are like, oh, you know, uh, you know, the movie just came out and, you know, that's why you're interested. Actually, no, my daughter, the uh, tennis coach is from France. And we just had a chat one day mm. and I, you know, and of course I brought in the Charles de Gaulle conversation. Um, I had an Uber driver, you know, from uh, in Miami who was from Algeria who took 15 minutes of his time. He was like, oh man, let me, let me tell you about our perspective of what happened and et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, it led me into, because I finished the de Gaulle book, it led me into going through this huge volume of Napoleon by Andrew Roberts. Uh, which was a great, just a fascinating insight into um, Napoleon. Napoleon, yeah. You'd recommend that book, Andrew Roberts, Napoleon? Yeah, most definitely. If um, most definitely, yeah. And, and how about it's so? So you do go back and finish. You're saying that basically there was a book you didn't want to finish it, and you go back and you went back and finished it. I, I was reading one on uh, recently. Uh, oh, not that's not true. I was listening to one recently um, on uh, gang violence in from the nineties in um, down here um, in Salinas in California. It's okay. where it's uh, uh, the Sereños and Norteños, big Mexican uh, gangs. It's mm -hmm. it's basically two Mexican gangs. One of them are the the far represent like the farmers, the the, mm -hmm. the the migrant farmers, and one are like the people, the Mexicans who've been here for like you know already fifty years, right? Mm. And, and and their battles and stuff and about how the FBI was involved. The, the huge, huge crime shit. Anyway, and halfway through the book, um, they take two boys out for no – two of these gang members meet two boys out in a field and slit their throat for no reason, just to make a statement. And and I stopped listening to the book. I ended up going back to it like two weeks later but because for some reason when I read stuff like that, I'm reading it about my boys. Mm. I don't know how that happens, but I'm reading, I'm reading. And then the boys that got killed and the boys that did the killing all of a sudden somehow are my boys. Mm. And then I just, I, I have to take a break. I'm like, I can't do that. Yeah. I understand that. It, it's, it's, it's a trip. I never had issues like that before I had kids ever, 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 ever. Mm. I could watch any violence or any bad shit. Now all of a sudden, um, uh, oh, yeah, it's possibly, it, it's possible that, uh, we wouldn't, you know, in a in another world and another savan, we wouldn't want to project that um, possible lack of reality onto our children. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I don't know. know. Possible lack of reality, or or, or possible. That's what and I, I preempted that by saying in another <laughs> universe with another savan, right? Because yeah, I know yeah. how it would, you know, someone could take it personally just based upon the story that was just told, right? Yeah, yeah. So let me front end it. I completely understand. I said that. And I also am very sympathetic to it because I have two young girls too. But I asked the question in my mind, why don't I discontinue after I would think this, uh, I would, I would watch the same thing. Mm. Like I've watched a number of different, you know, indirect forms of uh, call it education or call it entertainment, Hollywood yeah. around, um, 
sexual privacy issue issues or um, the sex slave right. um, shit, right. you know, so, so I could easily stop there. So my point was um, that I would want to finish and completely get through to ensure that I have the deepest understandings of where all of it comes from. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would be hesitant to stop it in case I missed, for example, in your point, maybe there's something more after that, mm -hmm. that led to a better understanding. It doesn't disregard right. the fact that two kids got their throat slit. Right. But I sure as shit would not want to. And that's why I said in a different universe. Well, I, I also kind of get that too. You, that, you don't want it to I go to waste. To project that understanding on my girls. Right. 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 I, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's all why I say it. That's all. Um, I don't, I don't understand this question, but I'll throw it up here anyway, since they paid a dollar 99, uh, James, uh, do you align with Peter Atia on health span? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I mean, obviously I've heard of Peter Atia, but I don't know. I don't know what he says about lifespan. Does that mean anything to you? That question? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I can't, I don't know. I don't know enough on Peter's point to, uh, to comment, but, um, I probably don't align in in a number of ways. Uh, the way that I probably wouldn't align is um, uh, what's his deal on what's his deal on health span? Do you know? Well, well, health? it's very similar to um, what I guess the public's knowledge would be um, what OPEX believes in for basic lifestyle guidelines, and that would be you know, all these, uh, uh, the natural things that occur regardless of supplementation or the therapeutic paradigm, which will get you to this like maximum potential for life. Okay. So, and this is why I'm, I'm, I'm just going to take a crack at it saying for shits and giggles that I would probably disagree in some ways with, with, uh, with, uh, Peter's points. Uh, but we may still end up in the same bucket. But uh, the intentions from where I come from for, quote unquote, like living a larger life is using the words based upon uh, vitality and uh, a person's potential. And that's the two. That's probably the biggest difference in my my concepts of it and how I see Peter's concepts is that he is approaching it for good reason, based upon his training from a therapeutic perspective. Right. So he's a doctor. Um, and, you know, regardless of what you what you think about uh, Peter himself, the ideas that he has is going to come from a therapeutic paradigm. That means that a lot of the recommendations or proposed research or digging up on anything is not coming from 20 years of work like I may have had, and I'll just allow people to assume that if they want, I may have had on working with people that actually gets them to a more vital perspective. Mm. So my argument is always, you know, if you, if you have an issue and you want to quote unquote live longer, it's not to, it's not to wrap medicine around it and research and say things like rapamycin is effective for this. And, you know, there are some ways to balance out uh, Ozempic and look at all, you know, which I'm going to say that Peter may go down that route for good reason, because that's what his specialty is. Um, but it still has a quote unquote medicinal therapeutic flavor. Uh, so that as opposed to what, as opposed to what uh, lifestyle uh, pr just practices, lifestyle practices. Yeah, well, an awareness that uh, there's no such thing as biohacking, mm, mm, uh, mm, an awareness mm, that, mm. you know, natural processes is the antidote to all of your all of your shit. Right. Right. So. Right. So the argument on that side would be like, well, James, you know, no one has time to to walk for 90 minutes. It's like that doesn't make your proposed like five minute zone to you know your intervals. excuses don't make you right what's that your excuses don't make you right 
Yeah, it was your, your excuses, but also what Peter would propose, right? As yeah, yeah. Admirable, you know, ideas, right? He's not right, saying right. like, right. you know, just go out and take drugs and turn right. it into this world into a Wally kind of atmosphere. But, I mean, he can't make money. He can't, uh, you know, as I have always say, broccoli is not, is commodifiable. Like, you, you know, fucking walking in the sun there's no money to be made on that right right uh lifting weights uh there's no money to be made on that right like just challenging yourself physically right walking barefoot really cuts into the shoe business <laughs> hey you walk barefoot not really i mean uh, around the house but you uh, don't ever do your you don't ever do your walks there time i do just based yeah. on uh Having you ever grass, go, like real grass. It's kind you of ever grass. go a whole day without wearing shoes? Like just on accident? I don't mean even consciously. Just like, yeah, there was no need for shoes today. Yep. Yeah, in the summertime more so as opposed yeah. to here. Yeah, because the heat and lawns here are in Arizona are rocks, you know, so. Right. Th that, that's it. You know, someone told me, James, it was uh, it was Jeremy Kinnick. I don't know if you remember him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jeremy uh, posted on Instagram. If you're. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but if your kid's under five and they're outside 80% of the time, that's all you need to know about parenting. And, and I have three boys and like, literally that's like, that is gold. Like my, if my boys are outside and, 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 and we don't put, we, we keep our shoes in the car, not, not on purpose, but because we would never put on shoes unless we needed them for an activity. I'm in Santa Cruz, California. It's just always 70. Oh, so wow. unless you're skateboarding or I don't know what, unless you need shoes or tennis, you, um, you don't wear shoes. You don't wear, um, but that, that being outside is like, uh, ki kids will figure out all the movement shit and healthy shit and all that stuff. If you just, but you got, they got to be outside. They won't figure it out inside for some reason. Or the, I don't know if it's that, if there's some metaphysical something or another, the energy bouncing off the walls, but bad kids outside are good kids. Yeah. Um, on, yeah. And most uh, people will yeah. not go a whole day without wearing shoes. That really puts you in a really rarefied air. Some people can't even, you know, some people, I think the vast majority of Americans probably think that that's even weird. Oh, for sure. For sure. And that tells you a lot right there. Um, yeah, but I can't it's probably just top of mind based upon a ph philosophical argument I had with a colleague of mine um, the other day on what, uh, some people would call this evolutionary mismatch as to what's happening in modern times. Mm -hmm. You just hit on it as an example. Um, and my, my question back to you is, you know, uh, based upon your, um, my agreeable, your, my agreeable points, right. On, you know, walking outside nature, kids in the, you know, et cetera. Um, but there's but there's some issues with that and this is what we discussed in philosophical debate is like how many young americans as an example to take a geographical isolation of that have the opportunity to do what you were just proposing your your kids can do right um first question second how many have the forethought to think it's actually a possibility that could lead to their kids resilience you know um you know, mine was, it's, it's mine like, was by de facto. I'm just, I'm just, yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm just, yeah, I'm just floating out what a philosophical poor, kid, poor kids in warm climates have a great opportunity, right? Oh, yeah. Like poor, yeah, and that's sure. basically what I was. I was, a, I was, a, yes. my mom was making $12,000 a year working and I was, and we were poor and we were outside my, and my, so my mom was at work. So yeah. even though I was the fat kid who never played any sports and got picked after girls in high school when they picked teams, I could fucking, I, to this day, I can throw yeah. a rock and hit anything because I was outside all yeah. day just throwing rocks, skipping yeah. rocks, hitting cars. And so that is, it made me, gave me some listen, physical prowess. Listen, I'm, we're <laughs> both, I'm assuming we were both Gen X. So we, we have the same convicted it, perspective on right. that. Okay? Everywhere on BMX running. Um, listen, and I, I get it. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. point I was saying is that, you know, and I think it, it just because it, it comes up in my brain of just sitting here and arm chairing, like what yeah. would be the answer to fix that? I, I just keep thinking about, well, how do we, how do we evoke that in like 10 million more five-year-olds in America? We brainwashed the public, uh, James. Um, I don't know if this is true, but uh, cause I wasn't alive in 1950, but I heard in 1950, the, the U S government did a massive campaign 
Um, and we saw it with smoking too, actually in mine in your lifetime, but the, um, they did a massive anti littering campaign, I guess, right before you and I were born, mm. I guess it used to be okay to litter and they fucking just, uh, uh, what's that call when you make people feel guilty? They shame, shame. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they shame people into littering, just being completely uncivilized and inappropriate and, and littering stopped. And then, and I guess the only thing I can think of that it happened in a positive way and, in, in in our lifetime is smoking. I mean, do you remember when everyone used to smoke and they just shamed yeah. it? They just yeah. shamed everyone. <laughs> if you were a smoker, you became a closet. I mean, you probably were in a car as a kid and someone was smoking a cigarette and you're in the back mm -hmm. and the windows were up. Mm -hmm. Um, no, listen, I, you're, let's you're sh we'll just on... shame people and then not put taking well, their kids outside. Listen, this is, I take it further. You know, my, in a, I, I take on this role of Kim Jong-un basically in a, in a in a physical you know fitness universe right. my my like i really do believe that it doesn't mean it's going to take place but that's where my brain goes is like oh it's great that a few kids because really it's a few we're talking like two out of a hundred are actually gonna run around outside barefoot okay just just so everyone's clear on effect size two in a hundred in america okay so secondly then my my brain goes to like, so is it an incompetency or is it in their environment where they're going to be born into a world where 98 out of 100 of them are not going to see role models that are going to, quote unquote, allow that to happen? And so that's why I take the next step of like, well, what's your answer to fix that? Hmm. Shame for sure. You know, I'm, I'm part being that, tongue in cheek, but but uh, you could change no, listen, it to education to education. If you think you're just Mass being education. tongue in cheek by saying yeah. that, yeah. I'm take I'm saying I take the steps further by saying, the only real fix is an authoritarian perspective. Mm. So it's more than just shame. It's not just social like shaming because it'll always people will always find an underground market to do smoking. As example, smoking is still right. persevered, right? right? So how effective was that? Right. Uh, but what happened if you like, I don't know, metaphorically, you know, punched people in the face every time they took a smoke. Right. Or, right. you know, I'm just trying to come up with this. We already scared. We all already know it kills us. And it's still that's not enough. That's not a yeah, powerful that's, enough deterrent. That's basically why I, in a, you know, in a, in a mind, <laughs> just just thinking about things as to what would actually create a change. Um, it's this real hard tension we have against modern freedoms and, and, uh, you know, this thing in the, the, the feeling in America that, uh, we don't want to have anyone telling us what to do. Right. right but what right. happens if what we told you what to do was actually going to make you a better thinker, right? Less, uh, less unhappy um you know less um you know dystopic <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. what happens you know so yeah. the 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 scary part is is this the two the two examples we have of being told what to do in society that are like really honed in and have a lot of uh um years behind them are the education system and the prison system those are kind of like two perfect totalitarian um, societies, right? You go here that you both of them are inside a chain link fence. Both of them serve you fucking fo food. We could go mm -hmm. into how rotten that is. Um, so the two the two examples that I uh, that I always think of school and prisons. I'm like uh, everyone has the same sheets, the same desk, the same, and some of that shit is bad, right? I mean, mm -hmm. like just even like think of if we put all the kids in the same desk and the desk is designed wrong. And then now all of a sudden we have a whole generation of kids who are like um, or like uh, like j not even to get into the crazy politics of it. And I don't know if this is true, but just for sake of argument, supposedly during the lockdowns, the average American put on 29 pounds. And I don't know if you agree with me, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that's like the worst thing that's like ever going to happen to society in our lifetime that 29 pounds on average and that people aren't going to lose that so, so we got to be careful with the decisions we make that it doesn't do that that that's that's my that's my only concern about the author exploring the authoritarian uh route yeah uh regardless of 29 pounds i think yeah. the 
some of the questions that people should ask is what's the intention of the person that's telling you that information? Right. And that's what brings us back to the, the, the disagreement that I have with Peter Atia and also the education, oh, oh. the education fixes. Do you see my point is like, yeah, yeah. Those are therapy. Oh, so oh, yeah. that the wow. answer well done. is yeah. therapeutics. It's yeah. a fix, right? right? Right. No, the answer is not that. So you know, I can understand your sensitivity to that authoritarian kind of tyrannical yeah. view. Yeah. I, I hold those same things, but I keep asking like, well, let's look past the 29 pounds. Now on crime and recidivism, I, I don't have enough to be able to say to your point, you know, eloquently, I, I do know just in my own brain that, you know, crime, crime's a fucking crime. So if you commit, a, commit a crime, you, you're not supposed to do that. Fuck. I, you know, there's a whole bunch of stories on the back end of like fixing that, et cetera. Now the education thing, by all means, I, I'm, I'm, trying to find a through line here in all of our conversation thus far. And it is, it is that particular thing. Of, there's probably two or three out of a hundred who have the, the parents that they're born to that can actually go through now a new form of reformed reactionary educational system and what is that? But see, my point is again, what is that going to lead to? So, right. so what do you do? And that's why, you know, <laughs> I don't want to seem like I, I lead that way, but it's easy to do that when you just sit down and read all day. Um, <laughs> is like just burn the whole fucking thing down. That's the only way to change the concept. You know what I'm saying? Are yeah, you I'm, I, I, yeah, I, I, I hear you. The, I hear the you. 98 out of 100 <clears throat> examples, because I can tell you what. Um, indoctrination and dogmatic principles always rise up in whatever the reactionary answer you have. Mm -hmm. So if your, your answer to fixing the education system is to put a bunch of, you know, grade three years, all, you know, that, you know, that that's the wrong answer to, to the concepts. I'm just trying to give you an example here of yeah. the, the dogmatic indoctrination. That's the answer, quote unquote, to our public education and its systems. I think that's a really shitty answer to that. So, so what is the answer to it? Well, it's, it's, I think it's impossible because it does involve quote unquote, a homeschooling kind of small community example um, of how that kind of proliferates. So kids are not you know, well, you said the uh, opposite. Kids are not told for for thirteen years that you got to do this in order to get a job, and and somehow there's this disconnect between age and power and whatever <laughs> that that everyone is everyone is coming out and not having anything to do in the modern world with what they did for thirteen years of sitting down at a desk. So, so the, the my questions, you know, would be like, well, what are you going to do about it? Um, um, and I appreciate you, it you're doing it differently because that's an individual you, example. You you said the two opposites, and those are the two ways. You have to burn everything down or take 100% personal accountability and responsibility yourself and raise your own kids. Those are those are two those are the two ways to make like um, uh, impactful change. And that but that, see that that's the. And right? I'm all, I only bring it up. No, because it's I'm always, open to being wrong. I'm open to being wrong. Tell no, me. no, no, I, okay. no, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm just, I'm just trying to point out because I'm here and I'm talking yeah. that these are the things that come up in my mind yeah. is that I want something more than just those two choices in my oh, lifetime. Okay. Right. That's right, what I'm right, saying. Right. Right. So, so it's like, okay, that's cool. But that leaves you and me fine. But you know it's what's a, crazy? Oh, but there's James. 90 percent of every other child that's going to be born in America, right? That doesn't have anyone on their side turning that direction. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah, I do. I, I, I do. To, I do. Um, but we, okay. but you can set examples. But a couple of things that really resonated with me when you said only two or three kids out of a hundred um, will have that lifestyle with the no shoes. I was trying to think. I don't know. I. I I'm, I'm out with my kids all day, every day. I'll finish this podcast and I just with my kids till the evening and I take them everywhere. We do skateboarding, martial arts and, um, uh, tennis. Like those are everyday type sh shit. And, um, 
I never see I never see other kids barefoot like that. Like when we go into they like as soon as they get in the car, they take off their shoes and we go in the supermarket and they're barefoot. Everywhere we go, they're and you're right. I don't uh, it they're on a whole uh and, and people look at them. And and I didn't even realize that until just now, until you're saying that. I, I guess I used to notice it, but now it's been nine years and I don't notice it. But you're right. They're all I, I see kids at te at tennis practice wearing um uh rain boots, and I'm thinking you're taking away your kid's ankle flexion and that might lead to a whole cascade of shit that follows them to their deathbed. I mean, I don't know if it's true, but I think that way. And, uh, they don't even know. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, it's a trip, but, but hopefully by my, I, I do think that the best thing I can do is just be, be an example to that. Um, other, I, on the flip side, I've seen a lot of other kids take their shoes off because my kids are barefoot run over to their parents. Hey, can I take my shoes off? Yeah. And so, um, but how many kids are going to get an aha moment by doing that? And then secondly, you know, right. if there's 98% of all the parents that are like, Oh, don't do that. Cause you're going to fucking drop something on your toe. Yeah. You know, immediately it's, you know, but again, I might, my, I, I keep like, yeah, I just keep going further inside of that quote unquote as a fix for, you know, arm, you know, being a socialist, so, social, social, scientist armchair guy you know just yeah. sitting in the chair like okay so would you say you're a socialist would you say that <laughs> are you a socialist i don't know it's no, okay. funny i just <laughs> no uh but uh I, good answer I, good answer good answer <laughs> good answer for today right uh i i should say though that um on top of that just because you asked uh before this call i was actually doing um uh some watching videos and reading um around some of the stuff well there's a lot of things left on the table when people pick on Karl Marx for example um because the immediate like trope because this is my point on your commentary on socialism no I don't think a lot of people truly do the work before they get to that statement of like, no, I'm not a socialist. hundred percent. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Because if, if guilty. And, and, there, and I'm saying like a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guilty. Because if you actually, if you actually read through, you know, Mar those capital and communist manifesto as example, like I have, you will, you will come out being like, geez, it's really a conflated political move that people throw at a thinker like that. Um, and then, and then of course, everything goes in the boat of it, right? Oh, Marxism, Leninism, you know, right, uh, right. socialism. It's like, well, you know, you can't just say, oh, this is the only option, you know, and this is the classic answer to it. Capitalism fixed poverty. You know, America was born on that, you know, this is the, and I'm like, where did you get that from? Who, who, who said those things? It's not that you're not right, but how did you come to that conclusion based upon it? So, well, anyways, all of us, I, was, I actually said social scientist yeah. armchair quarterback. Yeah. 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 Hey, James, you know, what's interesting about that. So uh, going back to what you said, so there's, um, there's someone like you who has, um, uh, 50 years of, um, hands-on real life experience and exploration and um, movement and and human optimization uh diet movement uh thinking um all, all the components of it sleep all that stuff right and then there's and and then you've all and then you've also uh, had the research at your fingertips also in this era then there and so so that's the the lifestyle piece and the in the in the information you have and then there's the Peter Atia and these other people who think of it more as a therapeutic uh, from that aspect they probably don't have nearly the hands on experimentation self and on others I think it's fair to say you've experimented on others and you've experimented on yourself that same thing is we've all lived capitalism right in this in, in this country we've all lived capitalism. So for me, mm. like, you know, for some people, it's like, holy shit, it was hor. I'm 50 and it was horrible. <laughs> right. Yeah. But for me, it's like I live in for me, it's like, damn, I live 50 years. It was good. Thank God. Right. For it. Right. Yeah. And so so there's those two different. Um, we have uh, people who've 
been ri- everyone's kind of an if you're in this country everyone's kind of an expert in it in their own in their own mind right yeah they we all took that journey yeah we all took that capitalism uh journey are, are you glad to be out of canada or do you miss canada do you like the united states does it even um, matter to you do you think like that i i, I love canadians i'm not mm-hmm. i'm not too excited about how i i see things happening at the political level in Canada, just like the way um, that people are being treated by the government. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, indirectly just, you know, leadership and you know, who, who those people are that are in, in position for that, um, and, and elected officials and, and then assuming then that, you know, the, the people in Canada, there's large percent, large swaths of them that think that, you know, Trump is, as an example, is going to like take away the entire democracy for the rest, for, for the rest of world eternity. You know, like, you know, who who the fuck are you to make a con? So this is where this is this is my sadness about Canada, is that uh, I love Canadians, but I'm not really happy with Canada, um, with regards to how that's operating right now in in the tensions that are that are just coming. But I mean, you know, people got nothing better to do today. So you got to come up with a lot of that shit to make it seem like it, the, their positions in, in election is worthy and et cetera. Are you, are you homeschooling your kids? No, no, okay. we made a, um, you have in a religious school? Uh, no, no, it's no. a public school, a uh, desert mountain, um, here in Scottsdale. Um, we, we tried at the end of, I think it was the first COVID summer, maybe 2020 or 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end of that summer, we made an attempt at uh, an online schooling. Uh, probably in hindsight, could have put a little bit more time into it, but the requirements of what it was going to take from Leanne and I for the management of it at the time of what we chose and what we did was ju- was too much actually. Um, and so it just, it just wasn't, didn't work out. And then, on the back end, you know, we come back to public schools and, uh, I know in a, in a, you know, an optimized world, it would have been awesome if I could have like wrapped my hands around them when they were younger and kind of like did that, but Hey, I, I was doing work, you know, (laughs) I, I was doing my job and trying to make money. Um, and so I didn't, but I look at their public school and I look at their friendships and I look at their activities and et cetera. And I'm, I'm fairly happy with uh you're with pleased that. it turned out good. You're not like, oh shit, they're in jail. No, um, but I should well, I don't think it'll, you know, always leads to I think what's worse than jail is you have a kid that doesn't learn in school how to think mm. or told what to think. Mm. So I think that, you know, I say that on the back end, um, not to stand, you know, not to seem hypocritical against public education, but I think. And then it comes again, it comes back to effect size. Cause I think there's probably three out of a hundred parents who are actually doing this. But for example, I read the stuff that my kids go through in school. Right. So, and I'm not doing it as like a helicopter parent. No, I'm doing it as a way of discussing with them, like critical thinking on yeah. what you're being told to read versus what you're going to interpret this reading through. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. So I'll just give you a very quick one. Please. My daughter and I, Chloe, are reading Hard Times by Charles Dickens. Mm-hmm. And in this, just to, you know, quickly summarize it to bring it to the point of, you know, you're asking your question around public education. I am a parent because I have the time and I do it where we're reading through Hard Times. Um, it's about it's really this broken line between uh, facts or sorry, science and art. OK, so what is factual in the world and how to promote that in education. And then all these pulls that we have towards what is beautiful and what is joyous, joyous and what is flowering. Okay. So all the imaginative creative things, that's the two the brain lines in the, in the, in the book. And he brings us about in, in a storyline, right? Um, and so my daughter and I are, we're, we're, she's asked for some kind of 
some kind of, uh, I think one of the questions was, what's the significance of this particular chapter and naming? And what is correct, right? As the teacher, and you know, got the answer to, was this like, was this somewhat like, let's call it light woke uh, answer to the oppressed and the oppressor, right? So this was the right answer, right? On a subjective question of significance of the chapter. Do you see my point? Yes, right? yes, yes. Okay, so I have taken the time because I have the time to read this with Chloe to say, no, the significance of the naming of that chapter is very subjective. It's all based upon how you're going to interpret. Do you see my point? Yeah, right? yeah. So yep. she got it wrong because we interpreted it as something differently. Yep. So I hope from that you're you're pulling out what the you know the public education system is only going to be positive if there's someone else there for that child that acts as this like buffer between what is real and what is uh, what is not real or what what the cu current cultural tone is for that. Like like my we indirectly talk about finances with my girls, right? It's not mm -hmm. taught in education, right? Right. We talk about real things, right? right? Leanne's, you know, our history of real estate kind of stories and stuff, right? And it just, you can just see it gets these, I'm just saying that because it gets these, this turning in the head that they're not getting in school. So I just want to say that on the back end of sounding hypocritical to the public education system, I would say if you have an adult there who's like, you know, working with them through the topics and it's strenuous, dude. Oh my gosh. The, it's strenuous. I, I, the, you know, it's interesting. Um, I, I wish I could say it was the public school that did that to me. And, and I love my parents very much, but it was my parents who did that to me. Right. So it's how you, it's, it's how you couch things. It's, um, abortion is, um, a fundamental right to the woman sovereignty of the woman's body. And it is about a medical freedom. And I was raised that way. It's, mm. it's, it's about women's rights, women's rights, women's rights. And it wasn't until I was uh, 45 that someone's like, hey, what about the killing baby part? I was like, oh, shit, I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like why my parents should have presented both to me. Yeah. Crazy topic, right. Sevon. Woman's body. Her right, ma'am. Slippery slope. <laughs> killing baby. <laughs> Which do you choose? And I could have, and, and then I could have been like, "What do you choose, Mom?" And she could have been like, "Fuck, dude, I don't know." The, the importance here, though, is, is don't get yourself in that situation. Recognize yeah. that having sex could create a baby, and yeah. this is a, a really tough decision. Yeah, and uh, uh, or or you know, like may, maybe like, hey, some people who have faith believe that everything's done by God, and um, uh, and just whatever. But paint some options. But I didn't. I was indoctrinated everything by my family by by one ideology to take me down one path it wasn't even the school that did it it was my my own parents i mean i'm sorry i'm sorry that happened to you but it's good that you're on the other side being an advocate for open thought and uh and but you're, you're just giving an example there of the principles that i'm hoping your listeners can extract from it right right we want to we want to teach young people how to think Yes. Right. Not yes. what to think. Like you were, you were told that you only think one thing about that particular topic. And I was told it was good and benevolent. And which, makes, was, which of course is natural, right? And that was couched in this like, Hey dude, you care about women. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, when you throw morality women. on top yeah, of it, yeah, yeah, be, yeah, you know, yeah. kids are like, Oh my gosh. I'm Do you gonna... have values, James? I, the way, well, like, I think the way you're asking the question, yeah, I probably back ends the previous question questioning you had last time about uh james could you become a christian <laughs> do you think yeah. you could become a christian yeah. let me preface it with this really quick i had sarah sigmund's daughter on the show and she said uh, she's a crossfit games athlete and she said um uh i my identity was rooted in um uh norse mythology no good good guess though my identity was rooted in my performance and how i did uh, athletically and then all of a sudden I came up with some values and my values, although I could change them, no one can take them from me. And if I stay true to them, that's my identity. And when she explained it like that, I was like, shit, I need some values <laughs> or I, I at least need to become conscious of my values. Yeah. Well, it's lucky actually, because a lot of athletes don't go through that route yeah. of this, uh, 
uh, let's call it a, you know, a transformation into extracting all those nice things, right? About how to live a, a virtuous life through physical, you know, experiences. Um, yeah, my mine uh, is probably, you know, still, I'm still developing, you know, mm -hmm. I guess you could say, you know, I, I probably won't quote unquote develop that concept of answering a very simple question of like, what's my number five, you know, on the, on the values. Right. Um, but I, I do have, I do have principles that I, I'm not going to lie that really resonate with me, you know, like, um, I love listening to Christopher Hitchens and watching, you know, hours upon hours of videos around his, um, his anti authoritarian or anti, uh, you know, tyrannical things that are inside a religion. Um, now that doesn't mean people shouldn't pigeonhole me then to be a, you know, a staunch atheist, but that's just the way I feel that there are actually, and there has been millions and millions of examples of people who were quote unquote, not faithful, faithful in the terms of capital F faithful, that were really good people in this world. Right. And right. there will continue to be that way, which is going to be, it's going to be a, an interesting play out in a hundred years when that continues to diminish and you're left looking back going, holy crap, like that, that project for 2000 years of making people think that what is good and what is not good comes from this like reading or this attempt at reading or et cetera. I think it's going to be interesting to see when everyone looks around, it's like, wow, we're all really good people or a lot of us are really good people, but we don't have those practices that, you know, people say you're supposed to derive your values from. I, I like well, religion. I'm not really religious, but I love those people's values. I, th I, I, yeah. The, I, yeah, sure. I think that I would even say, well, again, the, when, whenever I hear that, I, I agree. And I, I went, I, cause a lot of my friends are Christians, born again, Christians, or just very faithful individuals and, and, uh, whatever their version of church, their church going individuals. Yeah. And I agree with that. And Leanne and I say the th same things, but it's, uh, you, you, you want it, whenever we, you make that statement, I would just say as a learning for people, just say, well, when the stress gets really high, that's the only way the truth in those values will be revealed. Meaning, yeah, we do agree with them, but what happens when it gets really stressful? What is, what is the values? And so then the question comes up, well, what do you mean by stressful? Well, what are you going to tell your kids at age 12 around what is right and what is wrong around masturbation? Do you, do you see how now we're like, okay, well, that's one like light topic. We can work it out. Okay. Well, how about their actual finite physical life when they're 18 years of age? Do you see what I'm saying? Like the, 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 Dude, burning, the burning bush, the burning yeah. bush and like born to a virgin and like, et cetera, et cetera. Right. That, so, so a lot would say, yeah, but let's just look past that because there's like this, this number of values that they propose to have, which is arrogantly better than the atheists, right? Mm -hmm. Cause it is an arrogance to around them having the values and owning them as opposed to, I don't atheists. know if atheists have values. Yeah, they do. They do. Okay. Well, I guess, you know, we got to define capital A or yeah, yeah, small yeah, a yeah. atheist or yeah. humanist or, yeah. Yeah. You know, et cetera, et cetera. Where but do you think, let me ask you this real quick. Where do you think, by the way, there's a book called Mouse. Uh, it's a graphic novel. Have you read it? No. I, I highly recommend it. Basically, it, it's a, a story. A guy uses uh, his dad's story of World War II, and he uses rats and mice to be like in pigs to be like all the different uh, ethnicities. But basically, you'll see what happens when the Jews like basically the Jews are like running for their lives. And you see how they turn on each other. And it's, it's I mean, just imagine we throw 100 people into a swimming pool and we're like, hey, only 40 of you are getting out. You'll see some horrible shit. It's a yeah. great book, though. I highly I know it sounds depressing, but it's called Mouse no. Graphic Novel. It's like okay. two two books. You could read it in a couple of days. Thank you. You recommended Siddhartha last time. And I uh, I flew through that and it was very enjoyable to read about the the underpinnings of Buddha. Yeah, did you like Herman Hesse as an author? Yeah. He's yeah. cool, right? Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. Um, 
Thank you. Where do you think um, atheists get their values from? Like where, where, like, like I'm an atheist. Where do you think I get my values from? Again, I'm just armchair. Yeah. Yeah. This, just, but, yeah. 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 Um, you know, uh, Jefferson, uh, you know, one of the, one of the founding fathers, um, uh, wrote a different perspective of looking at, you know, these original documents so people can get the original documents of this country. They could pull out some specific ideas on human liberty, human equality, right? Yeah. Uh, pursuit of liberty, you know, happiness, et cetera, et cetera. You know, this is, this is one way, right? This is a constitutional Republic, right? America is right. Um, there's no heavy language as much as the religious may want you to think there's no heavy language inside of the documents for religious connotations, right? Uh, there's words like, you know, creator and et cetera, but it's left to interpretation even with that. So that's one place People could, quote unquote, derive that who are who are the nons or unreligious. Um, you could honestly, not to sound like a dick when I say this, you could just fucking look around. <laughs> you could <Yeah>. like <laughs> just read things <laughs> and like watch what's going on in society and not have this this veil of like, oh, that's their political identity. Oh, that that's that's how they're identifying. How do we derive who those people, you know, what those people are and what their values are based upon what they're doing. You could do that. Um, so I would just stop there besides saying just experience of the human, uh, human process. You know, if I was to really stretch it out uh, for me to answer that question in, in 1652 would be a much more intellectual challenge. You know what I'm saying? Like a much more intellectual challenge when a lot of the people um, had this specific line of thinking and you were thought of as a, a dissident of that thought at mm -hmm. that point in time in 2024, right. that's why I'm going to lean on, like, just fucking wake up, like just watch YouTube or just right. look around. That's how you can determine your values. And then you may see some people in there after watching them lead a really large life. And then you recognize they're like, oh, wow, they're not reading a book or going to church or, you know, what I'm saying and you're like, oh, geez, I never really thought about that. Now, there is there's some great arguments, which I actually do like of listening to like uh, Christopher Hitchens versus William Lane Craig. Um, I think his name is Craig. Yeah. Last name Craig of, you know, how do we come up to understanding where these values are derived from? Right. Like objective moralities or, um, you know, where these things derive. I love that conversation. You know, it's still a, it's still a good thing, but I'm landing on just looking around through experience and being able to say, yeah. That, Did your parents give you, my, my mom used to always say to me, treat people how you want to be treated. I mean, she was, and she, she would say that yeah. a lot, at least once a week, I'd hear that. Yeah, for sure. You know, those, um, your parents say that stuff to you. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the sticks and stones may bake your bones. Names will hurt you, you yeah. know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. By all means. Um, and my, <laughs> my mom was a devout Catholic, uh, part of women's Catholic league. Um, but with regards to quote unquote, and this is my like underpinnings of my curiosity as well as skepticism was as I, you know, Besides the whole, uh, oh, wow, that's my penis and these are the feelings I have and wow, masturbation is really cool. Um, this 13-year-old highlighting moment of like all this shit that's going on in that world and I see the real world, I'm like, it's yeah, fucking yeah. disgusting. Right. That's fucking right. disgusting. <clears throat> like how we live, how we're living our lives and, and we're putting on this facade on Sundays. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I really, dude. I really have, you know, some some psychological stuff that I'm going to work through for the next 30 years to kind of like heal myself of all the shit that I went through on that. And I do point the finger at, uh, at those quote unquote religious values that like seeped out, but I saw not helping a young human. I saw it at, at being, if anything, it didn't allow me to, you know, open my mind. It kind of, it kind of repressed this, this uh, biological reality, I guess, I, I guess you would say, you know, um, and so that's my that's my mom's side. My dad, 
I think he just kind of went along for the ride. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, but that's where my quote are your parents, parents still alive, James? Pardon? Are your parents still alive? My mom passed a couple of years ago with brain cancer, and my dad is still alive in Labrador, uh, where I was born and raised. That's the that Labrador is a spot in Canada. Yeah. You, you know, I was uh, having that inner uh, give my an inner speech the other day to a, a, a fake talk to a fake crowd inside my head, and I was thinking about how um, I can talk about. I can go anywhere in my brain, like absolutely fucking anywhere. And I'm pretty much not afraid to talk about anything. And I'm surrounded by people who are absolutely terrified to talk about things. Mm -hmm. And the example would be, hey, um, why can't the a, a, a deep reality is a boys masturbating at 13, but yet it can't be talked about. Mm -hmm. And it, there's there's a massive fucking disconnect there we have in society. Now, I did have someone um, many years ago um, try to st talk to me about the – there. there's actually a couple places I won't go. Um, mm. The justification of – I don't want to have a conversation with the justification of uh, hurting uh, kids sexually. Mm. Like someone many years ago was trying to be like, well, what about – and I'm like, dude, like I'm perfectly okay with there being an arbitrary age of 18. Mm. And like if you go below that, you go to jail. I'm mm. like – I, whether it's true or not, I don't care. I think it's good for civilization. Just like red means stop. And I think I, that's arbitrary, but I like it. I don't want to crash at the intersection. Yeah. But other, but, but we, we have a serious, um, issue in our society that people are just don't want to talk. People can't go places in their head that they're, they're prisoners in their, they're, they're prisoners. It makes well, it so I don't want to hang, can. it makes it so I don't want to hang out with people, by the way. It kind of well, sucks. Like it's, it's, there's this weird, like, uh, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, there's no doubt. Again, we're you and I are playing a armchair social science quarterback here, but right. uh, I agree with you that there's a lot of uh, you know self censorship. I also, I guess I could, you know, maybe as a this is kind of interesting how I'd answer it. But between coffee, between you and I, and no recording, yeah, um, you know, I I, I like I like to have opinion without knowledge. I like having conversation about those particular things, like right. the, the third rail stuff that you were talking about. Yeah. But I think there's, there is something to be said around, you know, how we as humans have created this atmosphere. We have to remember that. Like we, we can't, we can't say that we're victims because we're self-censoring and we don't want to have this conversation in public. And, I, right? and, and, and if I sounded maybe, like that, maybe you're maybe you you're right. Yeah, you're maybe right. You maybe you should. You know yeah, why yeah, you shouldn't? Yeah. Because you don't have knowledge on the topic. But right. but let's back up. I would disagree with your notion that a lot of people, a lot of people don't still have these stories going on in their head. I still do, think do or don't do these things. Oh, oh. But but I think where you and I may have, I guess, conversation's sake, I do think a lot of people should just shut the fuck up with that mind thought that it yes. should it shouldn't yes. leave their head, right? right? Unless it's going to be a conversation in a room that's not recorded with your friend. So your friend or two other friends could say, dude, like, that's fucking wrong. Like, you need to fucking, you need to read a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, but, but at least that person leaves the conversation with like, geez, I'm glad that they told me this is socially unacceptable to talk about the fine lines between a 15-year-old female and, you know, and I'm saying like, it, it, it becomes, becomes the, these areas. So... But I, I just wanted to make the point that humans, we need to remember we created this atmosphere, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So we we deserve everything we get based upon this digital, you know, area that you and I, for example. Um, and I flourish because I'm willing to push the line. The people who are pushing the line will flourish. But you got to be careful because I did have my YouTube station shut down for a week because I did say that food a, and exercise are the greatest uh, resource you have for your health. And and, and I, I, I I resent ever saying that. I'm such an idiot. That's disgusting. That disgusting. That to you. Thank you for that. Um, and, and, and just me just saying just dumb shit. God. Yeah. Forbid. Well, Pfizer. long live Pfizer. Yeah. Now that. Oh, man. They had they had a huge amount of money put into a commercial on on the Super Bowl last night. I'm sure if anyone saw that, what a what a very smart move on behalf of that company the way they did it last night. They're going to cure cancer next. Oh well, that's exactly how you get the emotions raised in the in the politic in the politic, right? 
It's like, uh, we're going to take care of cancer. So fuck you with all your commentary on vaccines. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude, uh, I, I'm pausing there because <laughs> I, uh, Thank you. Thank I have you. so much, um, <laughs> so much to say about that. I, we'll go live on I Rumble just, someday. I'd love to hear your opinion. Let yeah, me ask okay. you something yeah. controversial. Let me ask you something controversial. Anyways, the, but, but no, but I think okay. just the, the fine point on that was that we just have to remember that there are, there are specific things that you should not talk about without knowledge. Give me an example. Oh, so Israel, uh, Palestine conflict. How about squatting? Like my dad used to tell me when you squat, bend your knees. And like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, how about squatting? Should my dad have not told me that? He told me how to squat wrong. You know what I mean? Like he'd have me on my toes picking up wine boxes at five years old wrong. Should he have not talked about that? Because he didn't uh, know shit about squatting. It was something a doctor had told him. I'm using something a little more mundane than Palestine, Israel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, I tried to back yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like to my dad, should I? Should, does that should my dad? Should God should like grab my dad by the and be like, shut the fuck up? You don't know anything about squatting. Look at your back's all fucked up. Well, I was just, I actually just thinking, doesn't every kid think their parents are dumb as rocks? You know? No, I thought my, no. I still think my parents are the smartest people in the room. Oh, jeez. Okay. I, I, I know. I'm I'm a late bloomer. No, 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 that's true. You actually, you know, saw through it because they actually did know a lot of things. Um, I would, <laughs> if we were going to, if I was to answer it, so I'm not deflecting, um, I would say uh, uh, no. I mean, he had, he had every right to uh, make that commentary based upon what his experience was. Okay, so, so, so go back to Israel and Palestine. Gotta, Tell me that one. Well, why shouldn't um, people, like, so here's my, here's my take. My family was in a very similar situation to if you if you to the people who live on that piece of land called Gaza um, uh, and they fled and um, they fled. And my wife's parents were in a very similar situation to what those people in Gaza and they fled. And today, me and my family, I'm so happy my family fled. Yeah. So so I have that opinion. I'm, like my opinion is like, hey, if you live there, get the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> Like, don't, right. it's not worth fighting over, like leave and come somewhere and start a life and start working hard and raise your kids. And in a couple in like in 30 years, you'll be rich. You could still be rich. Just leave. Don't like those guys are bombing. They're crazy. Like, don't don't. It's not worth standing and fighting for the land. That would be. But I have that opinion because. So do you think that that I'm that's a legitimate opinion based on my own historical. Even if I lived in Israel, I'd be like, get the fuck out. Like, hey, don't be in the Middle East, period. Well, you didn't use the word that goes with the sentence, right? Which is that you. You have opinion, though, with knowledge, right? On my own personal experience, yeah, exactly. But well, you mean you make you make light of it, but that holds a lot of weight, right? It's not right. it's not your perceived experience; no. it's your actual experience, right? So, uh, yeah, and millions of my people were killed, and, and but, I'm so lucky. My family fucking jumped on yeah. a ship and got out. So yeah, lucky. but I'll just give a I'll yeah. just give a only for reasons of argument's sake, but to, to right. bring my point of opinion without knowledge, yeah. You know, it would be very easy then for someone who's uneducated, who just saw that on CNN, right? Whatever just went on. Yeah. And to say the exact same thing that you just said and think that it's knowledge because, but, but, but it's not knowledge. It's, it, they're actually just cracking an opinion from what they were told from the media. Oh, so you right, see right. their, their opinion comes without knowledge. Your opinion comes with knowledge right right so but the, the, then the reason why i was going to make a um a, a point to that as like well how do you determine knowledge it's a collection of a lot of things i.e you know stories around people that were born into that that have no chance of leaving as an example so right right where is there space for the conversation for that 12 year old boy right you know what I'm saying so right. Because it actually is a real thing, right? There right. are a twelve-year-old boy there somewhere who has knowledge of that. <laughs> particular, you see what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, there's a lot that needs to go into that. Yeah, a lot yeah. that needs to go into it, and that's what I mean by a very heavy topic. Like, <laughs> I can add a bunch of things to it. Uh, the Israel lobby, right? Like, just read up about. You know, so I could add a lot of components to it that give me more knowledge right so that if i wish to outside of my own head right. have an opinion on it i'd have something behind it so that's what i'm saying in terms of the opinion with knowledge is something i want to listen to i want to listen to those individuals like i want to listen to 
uh, the IDF soldiers and their their journeys, right? Over the past number, one. I wanna I wanna listen to individuals on the outside who look at it like in a, in a big picture scenario, right? Let's take a one side of the picture: uh, Christopher Hitchens, Edward Said, uh, Norm Finkelstein, you know, angle of it, and then let's let's look at the uh, the well, I'll just I can't I can't give you names, but just the other side of it, right? And that doesn't mean there's only two sides, but there's a lot of work in coming up with a specific knowledge on right. that topic. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Before yeah, I'm going to yeah. have an opinion. So if someone was like, "Hey, James, you're just a fucking trainer. What's your thoughts on Israel Palestine?" It's like, I don't know if I have the reading. I, I don't know if I've done the work to have enough knowledge to have an opinion on it. I could say something on Twitter or put something on Instagram or just like retweet a uh, baby's heads being cut off. Right. I, I could, right. I could do that. Right. But what the fuck is that? Right. right. What the fuck is that? Right. It, and um, I, think my, I think my reaction to your question is, is pertinent to the seriousness in that particular topic. Right. A, a, a great point. You know, you bring up another going to like a, a, a higher elevation there. That's also the thing too. Like, it, it, some people might couch the problem uh, as, "Hey, whose land is it?" And so, so they'll be for the next five years arguing that whose land is it. Whereas I couch the position as, is like on a personal level, do you want to survive? And so they're there. It's the same thing with the abortion thing. Like the, the yes. two one groups over here saying it's killing babies. One person saying it's women's rights. They're two totally different ways of couching. Like we need people to be patient enough to see the different. What, what are we even arguing? What's what what is the argument that you need to win to get right? It's 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 a mess. Yeah. And it's still it's, and this is to make, to make it seem yeah. more pessimistic. Even even the public, when they're polled. Yeah, eighty percent of them agree on a certain timeline, right? In that process, right? Right, right. Eighty percent, regardless of what their intelligence is or whatever, that's what the people think should be in the law. So, so my, so my point being is that it there it, it becomes very pessimistic when people don't take into consideration geography, genetics, upbringing, class. All the things that go into, quote unquote, the abortion topic being more than two areas. Right. It's more than two things, right? right. There's right. downstream effects of the argument. There's et cetera. But we like only there's a group of people minutes. who just say, but God said so. That one, like like for a lot of conversation, I would people like, but it says in the Bible this, here. And I'll be like, this whoa. This is oh, a what? perfect example of, of what you mentioned earlier, right? Yeah. I.e., yeah. I like those people because of their values. Yeah. Well, when the stress gets high, the truths become <laughs> revealed. So this when is it, where when it's your wife that got raped, all of, are you still for dude, are you still for against you abortion? wanted to go there? I didn't. Yeah. I'll just back up by saying <laughs> you're the one that wanted to bring up specific topics to it. But okay, let me ask you this because you're Canadian. <laughs> I got this friend. Uh, I grew up in a very liberal community, and I got this friend. Uh, he has three daughters, and I call him the other day. I'm like, "Hey, dude, what do you think about this?" dudes playing in girl sports and he's like dude shut the fuck up I'm like what do you mean he goes dude it's isolated incident it's nothing quit being a dipshit dude quit like whatever you're watching quit watching that shit I'm like, all right i feel you on that all right thank you that that was two years ago we had this incident in the united states where basically a uh, a guy pretending to be a girl went into a girl's bathroom i think he like raped her and then they transferred him to high schools and then he raped another girl or something like that. And then the dad went to the student board. It was a big case, but maybe it was isolated, but the, Virginia, right? Yeah. And he, he ended up going to jail. He got in trouble. The feds like attacked him or it was crazy. The video was crazy. Yeah. But the, the dad did not deserve to be treated like that in my opinion. Anyway. Yeah. So now this week, so then we had the Leo, the, the, we had this uh, dude, big dude, six, four dude, uh, kicking ass uh in in swim meets now we got another dude doing that uh taking away ncaa titles but the craziest thing i just saw and i um is in canada there was a woman's vo a woman's volleyball event this past month and there were three dudes in it no three dudes on one team and two dudes on another team and when i say dudes i'm just i'm strictly talking about genitalia but penis mm -hmm. um you have daughters do you do you do you have any thoughts on that like I can't even like 
the abortion thing I see, but I can, I can see both sides. I'm, I'm like open. Like I, I see there's both more sides. Than, there's more than both sides. Sure. But. Sure. I, I see, I say I'm open to all sides. The, the, the dude thing I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm struggling with. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I feel very inflexible. Yeah. I'm like, hey. you can also, you can also be empathetic with the guy of their, their true statements really. Uh, because it is true that if you were to scour all the, let's call it competitive events that go on, the effect size actually is minuscule. But yeah, okay, now, okay. This is that's only my that's only my first point to say like right, again, right, right? Opinion with knowledge, right? So that means you're going to have to do the work. Like you want to ask the questions, uh, which is tough to do in that situation, right? It's tough to do in those situations, especially if I was to reflect on a boy being in a locker room with my girls, right? Yeah, it's yeah, like, okay. that, yeah. Oh, there and there's the pressure, right? All I know, of a sudden, it's like, I know, but, yeah. But again, change is not going to occur with emotions, right? Right, right. Instead. You, we got to ask the question, how in the hell did we get to this point? Mm. How in the hell did we get to this point? And I sit on the area of if more people did the knowledge around some of the reasons for the growth in intersectionality and gender variances, et cetera, if you did the reading into why that stuff comes about and you don't just jump on Marx or Gramsci or Leninism or anything, right? And you, you start to realize how that permeated in our culture, it would still, you could still hold those two views. Yeah, that dude should not be competing with my daughter in an event, but also I'm going to be empathetic to the reason why that young man thinks the way that he thinks, right? You have to, you have to be able to say, how is that possible? As opposed to, you know, uh, firing, you know, putting parents in jail or firing administrative people or trying to point your finger uh, at, at things that are really wrong, including like, you know, the prison situation in Scotland. Um, so you're you know, saying shit, shit that goes awry with this concept that still doesn't disregard the fact that those stupid things are still occurring. But you need to come to the conversation with a lot more than just reaction of so being like, you know, this is fucked up. Boys right. are boys, girls are girls. Right. That's not enough. So you're That's saying you're saying um, you need to have the knowledge that if you feed your kid Mountain Dew and McDonald's from the in their baby bottle to the time they're seven, they won't. The, 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 there's ample evidence that shows that they'll have a one third the testosterone of an average male. You mix that with um, sure. giving your kid a cell phone and him watching Little Nas X endlessly and watching porn, and all of a sudden, motherfuckers like you once exactly. again, you did this exactly. You fucked up this kid's hormones and you gave him the the content of to be exactly. susceptible to. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. So listen to yeah. Savan's right. words and extract yeah. the principles from that, right? Which yeah. is what you're feeding kids and what they're, you're feeding their brains, right? right. So the, the, your, your point on the phone thing, technological changes that have occurred in 20 years, we don't also want to just point our finger at that one thing. Right. But remember, we have organized our entire lives around that. So yeah, if yeah. you're like, oh, geez, I can't, they, they must be sick in the head because their perception is that they're a girl. Aren't you taking a pause to be like, yeah, but you are on this fake reality for six hours a day. You actually think that's real. That's fucking not real. But you're going to be able to make a horrible, vicious tweet towards that young man Who's a fucking human, by the way? Right. They're a human, right? God, you sound like a Christian. Are you sure you're not a Christian? You sound like a such a no, benevolent a Christian man. would not say it this way. <laughs> oh, you know? okay, okay, okay. They would sound. They would say this is a this is a man of God, by oh, the way. Oh, this right. is okay, a, you're right. Good point. Good point. We all have a you know. Um, do you know what I'm saying? Like, but you sound very you sound very loving, very caring. Well, if that comes across that way, that's great. Uh, it proves my point of the atheist being possibly being caring. Right. Yeah. Uh, we but just no, are I, agnostic. I, I, just, I have a disdain for individuals who poke their finger at something just because it's performative or because it's going to create more vitriol without having the knowledge of the particular topic. 
it's, but it's, listen, as I say that, I become very nihilistic in my thinking because it's like, well, you know, fuck, that's it, man. This is, you know, life is lived on, you know, on social media and this false reality that we have. And a lot of young kids are not outdoors running around barefoot. That's the fucking reality. So that's your, your daughter who's driving. Does she have a cell phone? Yes. She's not driving with a cell phone, but yes, yeah, she, she does have a cell phone. Yeah. And, and, and are you, do you have like all it, rules around that? Like do you let her do Instagram and, and stuff like that. Yep. Yep. They have, uh, I would say, well, <laughs> Chloe, just to give you some more, uh, Chloe is 15. Uh, Hannah is 17. Um, they have uh, parental, you know, restrictions, and um, I'm just saying this is this is the terminology inside of Apple and phones and et cetera. Right. Uh, where, wherever our knowledge is on that, but we have restrictions based upon it. Um, we do have timelines during the week and the weekend for usage of particular, you know, uh, timeline for hours usage. I think it's like two hours or uh, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then, you know, Monday to Friday, it's uh, close to zero unless there's something inside of there that, you know, there's time allotted or there's exceptions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I will say that all on the back end of being like, I don't, I, again, I don't want to sound like a, like my public education commentary, but I'm very close to my family. Mm. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm with my girls uh, when they're not at school, mm. right? Uh, we, we're, I'm, I'm like... 20 feet from them when they sleep mm. uh, on the weekends. I am right next to them. I still hold my hands, hold hands with a 17 year old mm. theme. So I just want to give you that story to be like, you know, you're um, connected. I'm connected. So there's probably an occurrence where they see my actions. Cause I'm not on social media, my actions of well, quote unquote connection to the real world. I'm acting as some form of an adult where they look around and go, Oh wow. You know, but if, if Leanne and I were like nonstop, you know, flipping and da -da, whatever, whatever the thing is. Yeah. Um, I should be, I should be understanding of the fact that my kid wants to be on there at 1 a.m. in the morning at night. Right. It's right. It's like, Hey dude, <laughs> you know? So, uh, that's the long winded answer to your question of what Hannah does with her driving and uh, cell phone. It's, it's wild to think that, that kids in, I think you're right. I think kids are in bed at night on a school night at three in the morning, they still haven't turned off the app. They got a cord running from their phone to the wall. I think that that's you, like millions of kids. You would be surprised as to how much I think I, yeah, I think. Damn dude. I know. Just think about that. And when you get into effect size, IE like just how many are mm -hmm. in that situation. Uh, what are you ready? What? You ready, James? Heart, huh? heart hold, use your seatbelt on. Heart, heart, we're going to slam on the brakes. What about tooth powder? Do you ever we'll use tooth? Do you know about tooth powder? No. Um, what toothpaste do you use? Uh, I don't know the name brand. Leanne gets it. Um, it's like a, let's call it a newer age version of Tom's. Okay. No, okay. Flor no fluoride. I don't, I don't think so, but... Hey, I want to be. I want to be careful that I don't. Uh... I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you some tooth powder. I'm coming out with a tooth powder. I started using tooth powder, okay. and then I got. I got into this kick okay. about how fluoride is just like you can't find one benefit. There's the only thing that tooth uh, fluoride does is it hardens the enamel in your teeth. Everything else, it's just absolutely horrible for you. It is like, it, especially kid. I mean, it is bad. Mm. And um, appreciate it, that. And, and and no one's pushing back like no, no one pushes back against that no one's like no it's healthy for you even the people who are like yeah it strengthens strengthens your tooth enamel it's fine just don't swallow it i'm like motherfucker i'm putting that in my mouth what do you mean don't <laughs> swallow it <laughs> so i started using my my mom and my sister have these beautiful teeth and they've just brushed with baking soda and i'm like i don't really want to do that so my sister got me this uh uh, tooth powder so i started getting a tooth powder and then i'm just coming out with my own tooth powder it's mm. basically basically bentonite clay um crushed crushed egg cells a little a uh, little bit of salt and um, a little bit of charcoal but dude once you start brushing your teeth with tooth powder you'll never go back i'll okay. I'll, send, I'll, I'll send you yeah. a link to the stuff that i started with and then when when my stuff comes out i'll, I'll send it to you You're was this a uh, was this like a an inputted uh you know sponsor opportunity right 
No, no, I, yeah. I'm just, okay. no, I'm like really. I was gonna I'm say like, that was magical. I mean, you're better oh. than Ben Shapiro at like flying through the. Hey, all listen, of a sudden the sponsors come through, and you're putting it into a like. Oh, I'm gonna involve my. I can involve James in this sponsor. No, show. I, I'm real. I, I would. If I'm really into it. Like I believe it. Like I started using Fantastic. tooth powder, and I've never used toothpaste again. I would even just like, um, and I brush my teeth pretty regularly. Like you know, like probably like five times a day, I'll just use the toothbrush with water. Okay. But but once or twice a day, I use the tooth powder, and I just, it, it's a complete game changer for me. Like everyone and every adult I've known who switches to powder never goes back. They're like, I'm never using toothpaste again. Like you never, like you just yeah. don't. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, two things on that one. Um, Leanne is, is, uh, I could say definitely more into that. And I kind of just follow suit with what she's up to. So I think the, you know, she does like the oil pulling and the, you know, the charcoal stuff and et cetera. So if she has landed on this particular toothpaste that she's using, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I'm in good hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But oh, good point. I'm yeah. Still, I'm like that with my wife too. Yeah. I'm still not going to deter from uh, making an yeah. attempt of, uh, you know, doing uh, five times a day with the powder. Secondly, um, just because you brought it up and it's not to argue your point on this, like, uh, or argue on the point I was making of how the therapeutics uh, and the biohacking concepts are around us. Because I guess your area of tooth powder could be like that, like kind of weird middle zone of uh, like, well, what did we do before? So my my point would be just as an extract a principle from it for people is that uh, in a world where people only eat real food. Yep. Yep. You see yep, where I'm going with that? Yep. It's yep. Like, I agree 100 okay. percent. I okay. agree 100 uh, percent. In, in, in my in my mom and my sister really do only eat real food. And so, so there's that, there's that caveat too. Awesome. And I'm pretty good too. I'm like probably like 90%. So awesome. I'm, I'm probably, um, yeah. If, if, if all you eat every day is a steak and a, um, a handful of broccoli, yeah, you don't even, you don't need tooth powder, but it's basically just brushing your teeth with dirt. Awesome. So, yeah. And, and on uh, that point, why I mentioned it for real food, just yeah, so I point. can be again, a prophetic around what I'm looking for there. Yeah. Yeah. Is that I do want people to think a whole lot harder around what their ultimate life life potential is mm. and not quote unquote, you know, just say to, to your point, 90%. Um, if you are saying 90%, again, I'm, I'm failing to stop using you as an example, but because you said okay. it, I don't mind. You, you do want to think just for shits and giggles. I'm asking the person who's the listener to sit down and contemplate on this. What are you afraid of by a hundred percent? What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of, as an example, uh, fear of missing out, which is what we're told we're missing? Mm. Um, are you afraid of, you know, what comes with what your perception is of the perfectionist, right? Because a hundred percent and being a perfectionist are not the same thing. Do you know what I'm saying? So I just want people to ask that. The reason why I say that is that I do think that there's a lot of people that leave a whole ton of shit on the table for what they can do for their potential in their life because of these conforming ideas around moderation versus like true, like 100% commitment around. And if some, some people honestly are like, well, I just get too <laughs> obsessed and too disciplined. Well, why don't you fix that? Why don't you fix the fact that you become too obsessed over something and, and then just go back to, okay, maybe 99 is good enough. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's right, the point right. I just wanted to make on your point there is that my whole, you know, irk in my own brain is like to give opinions on people leaving a ton of shit on the table with regards to how they can create the highest potential for themselves. I assume it's everyone is the same way. Tell, tell me if this, I'll give you an example. Yeah. Um, so, um, all I want to do is eat a uh, ribeye and I feel great when I do that. So like, and then, and then I'm, uh, you know, and I'm like seven days in and I, all I've been eating is just ribeye and, and water mm -hmm. and, and black coffee. And so then it's, uh, nine o'clock at night and I just got done doing research for the OPT podcast. And, um, I, uh, walking through the kitchen to the bedroom and I see a banana that's, uh, been cut in half. Someone ate half a banana and so one side of it's getting brown. 
I'm like, oh, that looks good. Might as well fucking just eat that before that goes to shit. And then <laughs> so I go over there, I peel that and I eat it. And I'm like, man, this would go I, 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 this would go great with a handful of almonds. <laughs> oh, you know what? I think that there's a ton of sparkling water uh, in, in the fridge, too. I'll drink some of that. I, I, I know I know that's going to hurt my stomach. That's going to make it so like I have to get up in the middle of the night and sleep and it's going to interfere with my sleep, but whatever. And next thing I know, I got a fucking bucket of almonds out. I got three bananas out <laughs> and two liters of sparkling water. I just assume. And then, and then I go to bed and I'm like, well, good luck tomorrow, buddy. <laughs> I'm pretty compassionate with myself, but isn't that every, isn't that the story for everyone or no? Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Is that your story? Know. Do you, do you do that? Is that, how does it, how, when you, when, when James Fitzgerald slips up, how does he slip up? Tell me one of your slip up stories. Um, Be vulnerable, James. Give me something. <laughs> slipping up. Give me something. I like, guess I don't consider it slipping up. Um, like you go to a wedding and someone hands you like a, a shot of Uzo. You go to some Armenian guy's wedding and he hands you a oh, shot of Uzo. And like, yeah. and you're like, ah, oh, really, you know, it's been 372 days since I've had a drink. I don't really know if I want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't know where you just take the shot or do you say no, thank you. Oh, well, no. Well, I'll give you a, I didn't take a shot last night cause there was uh, shots going around at the Super Bowl party. Um, and I didn't, but I think the, use a little ranch not, dressing not to, on that broccoli the, though. You use not a little, to deflect, not yeah, to deflect, yeah, but yeah. this, this is, this is exactly what people get into um, when they try to, when they try to work around the truest intentions and the truest like beliefs that they have in what's going to work best for them. It doesn't mean that quote unquote, there isn't modern shit that's hyper attractive and, you know, with, with attention and hyper addictive and, you know, hyper novel, et cetera, that's still going to be there. But, but to try to, you know, to try to move people into like, well, you know, see there, there, that's, you know, th that's an example that a hundred percent doesn't work. That's, that's a wrong way of going about still believing that a hundred percent is going to give people their potential for their lifetime. It, it, it always ends in this like behavioral adjustments that we have to do relative to modern times. So you know, um, if you know what I'm saying, I, I don't, I don't see it as the way you're proposing the question is. Okay. It's just, but Re I, I would, I would, but this would, this would, this would, I would have opinion <laughs> yeah, yeah. on how you would, how you would, uh, uh, in your specific situation, yeah. um, I would approach it with logic, right? Meaning like, I don't know how many examples do we have to give you, uh, of, you know, uh, for, um, I'll just use a millennia, but we can go back a whole lot further that uh, it was very beneficial to have whatever we could source on the planet uh, as options for us. So uh, meaning like, yeah, did you know that there was tubers? Did you know that yucca was available? You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, but I thought that my steak and water and coffee would be all. It's like, well, that's illogical mm -hmm. because a logical way of going about it is all the nature's availability of variety of foods that we have done for thousands of years mm. that has actually made this brain bigger. Mm. So I, I would just approach it with that as like, well, what should I do in this situation of a banana and almonds? I would simply just approach it with logic being like, has bananas, does bananas under the category of quote unquote real food fit in? Yeah. Um, has it been around for a long period of time? Yeah. You know, so it's like, oh, it's fucking logical. Mm. It's logical that I would make that. But when you move it into the, uh, and again, this was just on the back end, it's top of mind for me, but the, this the debate on, you know, in ancient times, it was like written through James Joyce's Ulysses or in the Odyssey of like, uh, and uh, Immanuel Kant, you know, discusses this with regards to morality is that, you're going to develop these virtues, i.e. these behaviors to what you should do because there's these things pulling you in the other direction, mm. i.e. there's going to be Doritos on the shelf. There's going to be. And so, see, that's how I'm approaching your question is like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't I don't believe in the fact that I'm choosing that banana 
just because there's Doritos on the shelf. That's not how I'm making the decision. I'm oh. making it logically, mm. right? I'm saying, no, this food, this fucking banana has been around for a long time that we have like learned is fucking tasty, like honey. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, this fucking, that's fucking good, you know? And we've learned after a thousand years, let's say, that it's like, you can't just do bananas all the time. Why? Because have you ever tasted broccoli or a fucking rib? Like, I mean, it's like, but it's all under the context of real food. So that's how I'll put, I'll throw it back to you with regards to the answer of like, what does slippage mean or what is, you know, I don't know. Um, anything that's not real food, I guess that would be my answer to you. Like if that's, if that uh, ice cream is not real food, I guess that's, I'm going to call it a slip just for your language. Yeah. Did you have any ranch dressing at the uh, Super Bowl party? Dip any yes, broccoli? I, well, I think there could have been actually in some of the chicken, <laughs> the chicken dip that <laughs> it was like a hot sauce, chicken dip. Do you watch football? No. No, it's just uh, just an opportunity Friends, to hang hang out with some people. Roll party, yeah, yeah, yearly yeah. thing. Um, Bernie Gannon says, uh, James Fitzgerald. The only time he slips up is when he agrees to come on the Seven Podcast. <laughs> hey, dude, I really appreciate you coming on. I really enjoy talking to you. You got that some good cool. listeners. Thank you. It's I think we all should get in like a a, a public room together and and, and jam. Would be a. Uh... I I I um. I'm not far am, from you. I'm coming to um uh I'm coming to Scottsdale uh in March. May, uh I'll text you and if it's easy maybe we can hang out for a little bit. Of course. Yeah, I, I'd love for um get our families together and, and and hang out, introduce you to my three boys, meet your daughters, see Leanne again. Yep. I would love that. You come up uh they have lots of place to run around here uh up on our turf, which is the uh regular uh fake grass setting in Arizona. Yes, sir. Which I'm sure right. you're aware of, right? Yeah, yeah. Are you going to see Greg then too? I am. I am. I'm come up, come out there for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Maybe you should pull him up. Yeah, we could all hang out. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd I be would very like cool. That. All right, brother. Uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, really enjoyed the talk. I look forward to uh, chat with you again. Yeah, thanks for hitting me up. Take yep. care of yourself. Cheers. God, I loved that. I loved him. Good. James Fitzgerald. Yeah. He'll keep the he keeps the conversation big. I like it. Keeps it like open. Fifty. He's fifty. He's a young man compared to me. Fifty. So um I think my refrigerator is coming today. I haven't had a refrigerator for five days. God, it's going to be nice to get a refrigerator again. Oh, thank you, Matt. Susa fixed our Facebook thing. Um, oh, my wife has to leave at 940. See what happened in the world while I was doing the podcast. Oh, I wonder if we're, when we're getting Brooke Ends back on. She sent me a bunch of videos, uh, I think in regards to her faith. Before we went on, I was kind of caught off guard by that. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I did another new show. Uh, the behind the scenes episode one A and one B are out. You guys might have trouble finding um one B. They got they're getting kind of released weird. It's uh it's just the the limitations of YouTube. You guys want to hear something funny? It's it. There's these. There's these people. Maybe this should be a different show. There's these people that listen to this show. I don't know why it took me so long to figure this out. There's two, there's three of them. 
and all the the in every single one of their comments is negative always in the comments and i can't figure out why they keep listening to the show who is it it's um it's our uh Friend, 12 Daily Doses. It's this guy. Where's his fucking name? Jen's Master. It's. A, I think it's a picture of a black dude. I can't tell, but it, the, but it's a girl's name. Jen's. Jen something. Jen Sentaster. And then there's this other one. DC something. 101 something. I should have all three of them on at the same time and be like, hey, wh why do you listen to the show? And they all say some pretty illogical shit. Oh, I, did you guys listen to the news show yesterday? Um, there was Finn Air is now uh, is doing this thing. I guess all the airlines do it, um, according to the article that I was reading. But basically, they have every every five years you have to basically come up with some sort of you have to get collect some data based on your passengers and how much luggage they bring on the plane. And you have to figure out the average weight of your plane for safety reasons. That's what the article said, right? So you can't have I don't know if you guys you can't be on a plane that's so fucking heavy that it can't take off and crashes. I don't know if you guys remember that happened. Um, I don't know twenty years ago there was a the famous singer on some island. The plane was too heavy. And, and it, it makes sense. Um, ob obviously, on all the private planes I've flown on, it's it's always an issue. Always, like it's all it's talked about. Always on every private flight, if, if you the the pilot, that's one of the things he has to figure out: the weight of the plane, the the contents versus takeoff, and all that stuff. So Finn Air is weighing people, and but weighing yourself is uh, voluntary in order to figure out the average weight of the plane, which doesn't make sense at all because I'm going to make the assumption that the people who are who don't want to be weighed, it's because they're fat. They weigh too much, right? So they're embarrassed. Which then means that it's probably not a very accurate uh, assessment of the weight of the plane. But regardless whether it's accurate or not, it's completely uh, irrelevant uh, as the big picture. The only relevancy is, is the safety of the plane. We want the plane to be... To, to be safe for all passengers, regardless of if they're have their feelings hurt, um, if they're fat or not. D is there anyone who disagrees with me on that? Is there anyone who thinks that it's okay for a plane to crash as long as the people's feelings aren't hurt? Is there even one person who thinks that the people's feelings are more important? Let's just, just entertain me. Let's just say it's a binary choice like that. The article is very clear. And then this guy um, in the comments, this is one of the haters. It's DC 100, DC 100. This is the guy, one of the guys who always makes hateful comments. He writes, it's voluntary because they are just gathering data. It isn't changing the fuel load of the plane on the tarmac. It's like, why are you arguing that... Um, why are you arguing the point about the safety of liftoff of a plane? And at that point, it's like, like I'm okay with that's just now we're in my mind, just a moronic status. And it's like, Hey, you have to fucking just stop listening to this show. You have to, you, you're not even in the same, like for me, like staying alive is like fucking imperative. <laughs> And we're not even, we're never going to bridge our, I don't think, um, even with James' openness, we're going to bridge our gap. Brother. I really don't think so. Uh, Jody Lynn, hi. Uh, Jody Lynn, I was so nervous uh, for you about another combo with James, and as usual, you're so gracious. Why would anyone not want to be on your program? It's ridiculous. Yeah, it was good. I, I was glad. And uh, I think as as the conversation went, he he, I, the first thirty minutes he seemed um, um, almost like I was the first person he had talked to all morning. You know, I mean, he was the first person I talked to, but like he needed to warm up. But once he got going, he was I he was amazing. I mean, he was never bad, but he definitely took a little while to warm up. 
Uh, part 10 behind the scenes. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck is going on, dude. You guys should ask for your money back. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. We've already started releasing the free ones. I don't I don't know what's going on. All right. Um. Oh, no shit. Okay, fuck it. Yep, okay, I'll do it right now. Uh, CrossFat, ask for forgiveness instead of permission. All right, now listen, you know, you know that, um, you know that, uh, I'll call Will right now, Brandstetter, see what he says. You know that I'm trying to get access next year on the floor, right? Yeah. Can you make, um, we're live. Can you make episode 10 live? Fuck it. Yeah. So the numbers. Is there anything crazy in there? Like any, any dick pics of Dave or anything crazy? No, there's nothing crazy till episode 13. Okay. All right. Thank you. So they're going to have to strap in. No problem. Okay. Episode 10 live. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. There you go. Done. Just like that. All right. What's crazy is episode 11 supposed to be Wednesday? Or was episode 11 supposed to be today? Oh, we're a mess. I better hurry up. Are you blurring out? No, God. Are you blurring out Danielle Brandon for all future episodes? No. Uh, can I access all the Woods episodes if I join? Woods? Yeah, I don't know what Woods are, but yeah. Send me your money. You could do whatever you want. Call her high. Yeah, Will's a good soldier. He didn't even ask you. He's like, okay, I'll do it. Yeah, isn't he? He didn't even work That's for awesome. me. He didn't even like, he could be like, dude, what are you doing? Call me. I got a day job. I know. He's cool. He, I've never. Even Everybody heard. needs. Everyone needs a wingman like that. Dude, I got so many wingmen like that. It's so, it's so fucking cool. Like you, you call in the show. Hiller makes me thumbnails sometimes. Susan made sure just now he just texted me. I got you hooked up back up to Facebook. Caleb ain't doing shit. Well, he's at, uh, I think he's uh, defending our country. I think he's at like national. Guard reserve shit. Yeah, everyone. I don't know where you said it was. If it was a live call in show, whatever it was, but you made the point that if anyone comes on your show, you're going to be the host, and you're going to make them look so awesome. There's no reason why they can't be on the show. I have no idea why people wouldn't go on. It doesn't matter who it is, dude. Especially if you're looking for people. Danny Spiegel came on here. I give her a straight standy. Danny Spiegel came on. She would add tens of thousands of people. Off the bat, because people would tune into that shit. I know it's crazy. I'm dead. Hey guys, I'm everyone dead. subscribe. C- CEO member, everyone go subscribe now. Twenty bucks. Go watch the rest of the videos. Subscribe to the Seven Podcast. Go follow CrossFit Livermore. Go follow the Shattuck on YouTube. Andrew Hiller on YouTube. Buy everyone go pa- do it now. Buy some Paper Street coffee. Buy Paper Street coffee. Go to Vindicate, the best shirts in the business. I really wanted the Niners to win. I know. You but, did too? You did too? Or no? Yeah, I can't stand the Chiefs. Ugh. God, I wanted fucking the Niners to win so bad. How stoked are you if you're a Chiefs fan? Yeah, I guess you're pretty back not, to back. That doesn't happen anymore. It made me kind of want to watch, uh, fo- start watching football again. It was crazy. That was an incre- did you, incredible game. Incredible game. Did you see Rich talk about Travis Kelsey and uh, Taylor Swift. No, Rich Froning. Where? Where is that? Oh, uh, he hit the nail on the fucking head, man. Where is it? I saw it on a, on a reel or something. Instagram. He's talking about how like, they show her so much. They're not showing anyone else's wives or partners or anything like that. It's just so nauseating. Enough's enough. Uh, uh, my, thing, my wife said, thing. "Oh, Taylor Swift really is pretty." But like, I'm like, how can you tell? You can't <laughs> even see her. She's just covered in makeup. Like, how how would anyone know? 
I'm, I'm they're riding her going. jock so bad. You could you could see how freaking bad they're riding her jock that the second the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, the second it wasn't they cut to the to the coach, cut to the players. They cut to her celebrating in the freaking suite. What is uh, is it on his Instagram? You think? I don't know. Someone in the comments are going to say it. He was talking about Travis Kelsey, and it's just like he gets it, but it's just enough's enough already. I don't know where it was. Um, uh, it. I never imagined rooting for the Sevon rooting for the 49ers, dude. I was a diehard Niner and Raider fan as a kid. Remember, I grew up in the Bay Area. John, uh, uh, uh John Young, Joe Montana. I remember the Shanahan took over for, uh, um, uh, what was the guy's name who died? Oh, uh, the coach, the gray haired guy, Joe Montana's coach, Bill, 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 uh, Bill, Bill, the fuck, Bill Landry. Name? I want to find Bill it. Walsh. Bill Walsh. Damn. Damn. At least you got it for uh, someone in the comments. Yeah, I love it. It was awesome because back in the day when I used to play Nintendo, Tech Mobile, the yeah, 49ers yeah. were all freaking awesome because yeah. they had Roger Craig. He just ran through yeah. everyone. Hey, that guy kind of reminds me of Roger Craig, the 49ers running back. The way he high steps like that. Was Roger Craig white or black? I can't even remember. He's black, right? Black guy. Yeah. He was amazing. Yeah, he used to high step and like step on everyone. And this other guy is Craig's Lee or something. He's a white guy. Oh, look, Roger looks amazing still. Jesus. I thought OPT looked great too. Dang. That was that was the most unprepared I've ever been for a podcast. And I and I did it on purpose. I was like, okay. I just want to go just, back and watch it. I just want to talk. I just got out of the gym. <clears throat> All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, thanks. How's, hey, Bye. how's the gym, real quick? Good. It's freaking, freaking awesome. Okay, I got good. thirty-seven people signed up for the open. Oh shit! You have twelve members, and but thirty-seven people signed up for the open. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's so freaking crazy. That's crazy. How did you do that? You just you're just like, hey guys, we're doing this. Sign up. I I stress the importance of challenging yourself, doing stuff that you're not comfortable with, uh, and I also made it an in-house competition, teams of four. So it's not super pressure that it's going to be just you and like doing a leaderboard. You be partner up with people evenly, uh, e even level fitness and not so even level fitness. It all balance out. Uh, you're going to have a DJ, you're going to have food. Uh, yeah, it's going to be freaking awesome, man. Okay. Awesome. Hey, I'll uh, keep you posted. Okay. Thank you. Hold on For a sec. Sure. I, have to, I think maybe I'm in trouble. Okay. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. bye. I, hey. Made episode 10 live. Yeah. I'm I'm still on the podcast. Yeah. It was James Fitzgerald. Yeah. OPT. Okay. Bye. No, he's off. It was great. It was great. Let me get back to the, the people, the common people. Bye. Someone in oh, Andrew, are those bottles full of urine? That's crazy. That is crazy. Andrew's, I think Andrew's driving like a thousand miles today or something. And he sent me a picture of his passenger seat. By the way, that's a really nice passenger seat. That's nice leather. And he's listening to the Sevon podcast. He's got his MacBook Pro and two bottles full of urine. Damn. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. My wife just said, uh, oh, shit. It's Best Buy. Shit, 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 shit. Shit, shit, shit. Hi, yeah, someone called me from there for the delivery for my um, refrigerator today. They called 10 minutes ago. Sorry, I missed the call. No worries. Let me just pull up your information again. One second. Okay, thank you. I, so it wasn't the driver calling? Uh, no, if you're calling this number, it was likely me. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's Yvonne, right? Yeah. How excited am I? I'm getting a new refrigerator. I'm so excited. I haven't had a refrigerator in five days. I'm like living, like, I'm like a caveman. Ooh, 
Yeah. All right. Yes. So it was just a 30 minute pre call, just to let you know they're on the way. That's all. So that was about 10 minutes ago. They're probably, uh, they'll be pulling up soon, you know, maybe like another 15 minutes or so. Um, but you, they'll also call you again upon arrival as well as knock at the door. Um, so just keep an eye on your phone. Okay. A pre call. I'm going to start using that on my wife. Here I come, honey. 30 minutes warning. Perfect. Lovely. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Ah, she didn't. I don't know if how did my how did that joke go over? I don't know. If she. I don't know. Pre call. Okay. Well. Cool. Shit. I better turn my ringer on my phone. Uh. All right. <clears throat> Sorry about this. You guys are gonna listen to me do my uh all my domestic shit. Yeah, she did sound like she sounded like Rosie. Hi. Hi, sorry, we're on the air. Uh oh, so I called Best Buy. The guy's on his way. It's a 30 minute pre call. Pre call. Mm, that's nice of them. Yeah. Okay, and I have to leave here around 9 40 to take Ari. Okay, cool. And then uh I guess I just have to put the dog away and make sure there's a route for him to bring in the new fridge and take out the old one. Yeah, and feel free to throw anything away that you think went bad. Yeah, like everything. Tabasco sauce. Oh, okay. I'll just, do you, I don't know, do you think Tabasco sauce? Is... You can take everything out of the fridge and just set it on the counter. I'll come in and do it now. Okay. Okay, love I you, bye. I can do it now. Okay, okay love bye. You, bye. Oh, I want to hang out, guys, but I have to pee. Sorry. Uh, love you guys. Jody, thanks for the loot. Uh, have a great day, everyone. Um, Bye-bye. Episode 10 is live for the uh, members. Bye-bye.